Hi, my name's Peter Coffin, and people need to chill out. I've been chilling in the mountains of Peru, drinking ayahuasca with the shaman stew. Cup of champagne to the shift the mood. I've been learning about myself, finding out my truth. I've been healing my soul, child the best medicine. I've been learning shit from the aliens. Like how we're all connected to the pyramids. And how we used to use them for time traveling. Now I'm astral projecting, remembering how to navigate. Yeah, Alright, that's okay, that's enough. We don't need to be that chill. But we are going to talk about that lady and also why is this stuff in your face all day, every day? Watch all the way till the end for the answer. People hate this woman. She comes to us via the Twitter account, Women Being Awful, which is, <laughs> this is just, this is women being awful. What are some other examples of women being awful? You've slept with 164 guys only to gain experience and learn how to satisfy your future husband, but he hates women with a high body count. Olivia Coleman says she would be paid more if she was a man. Women Being Awful says, are you saying you'd be more talented as a man? Like, it's a, that's a weird question to ask. Like, there's no such thing as a Hollywood star that thinks they shouldn't be paid more. <laughs> like... Is it true that Olivia Coleman would be paid more if she was a man? I don't know, but is that her being awful? Women really saw their husbands come back from 12 hours of work tired and miserable and thought, gee, I want to do that too. So I guess women working is them being awful? Like, what is this? Oh my god, my gym has so many creeps starter <laughs> This one's almost, almost there. I, I don't think I have even one time seen a woman dressed like that at the gym though. A lot of them looking good, don't get me wrong. Never seen that. I don't understand what, I don't understand what this even is. This one involves math, so I, I don't, I, stop. Just, here's dogs sniffing a woman's ass. Woman being awful saying maybe wash it better. I have a feeling that's not the problem. This is kind of women being awful being awful. Because, like, all that is is a photo of somebody who doesn't want dogs sniffing their ass incessantly. I don't know if you've ever known anybody with those parts down there, but there's times where... That probably is a little harder to avoid. These BB hills killing y'all. And the thighs don't match. Well, 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 well. Turn to your neighbor and say, These BB hills killing y'all. Okay, that's not a woman being awful, but that is awful. <laughs> Whatever that is. That might actually kind of be uh, beauty standards being awful and it influencing people's behavior in a bad way. I do uh, want to echo the question being asked in this this one right here, though. What the fuck is going on here? This account called Women Being Awful mostly seems not to be about women being awful, but women being kind of annoying. Is that hippie rapper lady somebody I would want to hang around? No, not even a little. I, I'm not going to lie. I would be tremendously irritated by that person. I could not tolerate being around her. But is she a siren or a succubus? Are men dazzled by her good looks, bright clothing and hair? Her shiny pendants and accessories? Is, th is this a 6D Iowasha demon meat puppet meant to entice men to enter his realm to harvest their souls? What in the fuck is going on in people's brains? This is somebody who follows women being awful. This is the target audience. You're not going to see me being like the woman defender here. Like, all of these things are irritating to me. Especially women having jobs. Nothing makes me madder than that. Oh, But are these things notable? Are they worthy of collecting and aggregating? I don't know how they are. I didn't need to know that this woman was chilling in the mountains of Peru. And if indeed she did learn how to time travel using the pyramids from the aliens, I'm okay with that.
Just uh, don't be around me when you do any of that. In fact, the point of the aggregation is to ensure that people I would not normally be around, um, because I don't want to, are in my face, and I can't avoid them. And thus, I must generate engagement. Ah, the business model appears. What is social media? Well, when it originally started, I regarded it as some kind of democratizer, the ability to have an audience without having to go through the normal channels, without having to appease the gatekeepers and get their permission. Everybody thought, wow, this is amazing. I can tweet or post a YouTube video or whatever, and people see it. This is a different world. But, hey, remember uh, the whole plagiarism H-bomb controversy and how there is an incentive to make more content faster? How do you do that? Well, plagiarism is actually part of the answer. Uh, it is the bad kind of content aggregation. And I would argue uh, that no, it's actually not. This is actually the bad form of content aggregation. Curating an audience that hates a certain kind of person and then collecting that type of person for them to hate. What people 50 years ago would have called psychosis. In fact, you probably recognize this as the basis for most marketing. I like to call it cultivated identity. It's a thing where you slice people into smaller and smaller groups. They like to call it market segmentation, where they curate different demographics. And once you start looking at the main justifying ideology as one of market fetishization, uh, these things start looking less weird and also more congruent. Definitely check out my books, Custom Reality and You and Woke Ouroboros. Uh, they're both about that, among other things. And it's not just weird hippie ladies that seem totally intolerable to normal folks. It's also Larry David, who had a meltdown, apparently. Actor Larry David has a meltdown on CNN, calls Donald Trump a sociopath and a baby for not accepting the 2020 election results. That sounds like he must have lost his mind. You know, just like in the show when he acts crazy. He's such a little baby that he's thrown 250 years of democracy out the window by not accepting the results of an I mean, it's, it's so crazy. He's such a sociopath. He's so insane. He just couldn't admit to losing. And we know he lost. He knows he lost. And look how he, he's fooled everybody. He's convinced all these people that he didn't lose. It's, he's a, such a sick man. He's so sick. Anyway, no, it hasn't impacted me at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was, that was pretty mid for a Larry David freak out. Ah, oh, shut up! One option I see, wool glove. Shut the fuck up! And I'm sure a real Larry David meltdown is more than what you would ever see on the show. Outside of the show, in real life, things that Larry David says are kind of annoying. He has Trump derangement syndrome, and he cares way too much about Donald Trump, but... <laughs> This is not a meltdown. Like, this is just disagreeing with the things that he says, which you're welcome to do. Um, this is a meltdown. Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronouns! Fucking gender ambiguity! Fucking current day Californian shit! Because that's all we fucking know! Because we're boring! We're so fucking boring! Here's the thing. In most of these cases, meltdown is partisanized and being awful is curated nonsense, which is catering to a specific anti-fandom of some kind. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, the people who do this stuff maybe start with a decent point of some kind, like, yes, hippie woman and whatever the hell is going on with that one ass lady, there's something up there. But uh, is it women being awful? Did Larry David really have a meltdown? Yeah, Larry David says some pretty cringe crap that indicates he has extremely basic politics. But so do conservatives. Like, the point of Larry David having a meltdown there is conservatives are right. And they're not. 
I mean, Larry David is wrong, but conservatives are wrong too. And this hippie rapper lady who's been chilling in the mountains of Peru. If you say the words ego death around me, you better prepare for a rant about how your problem isn't that you needed drugs. Your problem is that you're incredibly high wound and refuse to interrogate yourself. And you simply decided that you needed drugs in order to do that. Yeah, I'm going to say that shit. But you know what else this lady was also preaching a lot of in her frankly not good rap song? Positivity and like happiness, which... I don't hate that. What's the final analysis here, though? What are we talking about? Well, it's fandom. You want to know why women being awful is a, a successful account? Because there's an easy built-in anti-fandom for women. And there's also a women fandom who functions as a women being awful anti-fandom. You have... Uh, multiple groups of anti-fandom going into this, arguing with each other, getting mad at each other. And, and let me assure you, that gets weird. Um, like somebody replied to this video, why do you hate black people? Which women being awful rightfully responded with, what? And then it just goes into this absolutely deranged anti-fandom war where some people talk about equating hip-hop to black people. We don't need to get into that because it basically turns into the whole cultural appropriation argument, which if you're interested, check out my Representation Matters documentary. But like there's people arguing like, I love her. She's a whole vibe. She's one of those bad bitch boss girl types. Yuck. It's not the message you think it is. How do you counter feeling? It's, it's this reply thread goes on a long time. The whole point is just weaponizing attention and conflict uh, to cultivate engagement and make money. And if you're familiar with the multiplayer gaming term meta, the most effective tactic available. Uh, this is actually a really good acronym that you can use to figure out how things are going to play out in a market. The most effective tactic available isn't always, like, the ideal outcome. Yes, I can spend tons of time on a documentary, uh, I can pour my heart and soul in it, and I can upload it, and it can get 10,000 views. Which sounds like a lot, but it's actually not a lot. Not when somebody else can spend nearly no time whatsoever on a video, upload one every day, and get hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views per video. The most effective tactic available um, is aggregation. And there's probably a few different schools of thought in terms of the most effective tactic available underneath that most effective tactic available. Again, plagiarism might be one, and stirring up conflict via aggregation of guys you hate might be another. This is why a market can never actually be a vehicle for democracy or for meritocracy or anything like that. A market can be an effective tactic to expand the productive forces, but one has to understand the criteria by which it will expand is not really one that you control. Because again, the most effective tactic available is the one that will ultimately win. The best thing can only win if it somehow is the most effective tactic available. And usually, given we consider things that take more work more valuable, that's not how things are going to shake out. And I think that it's worth trying to figure out why a lot of the time. Um, that's all I have for today. Obviously, stay tuned for more. I will continue doing this kind of shit. Lick the buttons underneath. Uh, give them a nice slurp. Become a subscriber. And uh, don't forget to money me at patreon.com slash Um, I hope you have a good day. Bye.